Welcome to the Interval Zero video overview of RTX real-time software. In this video we will tour the different RTX components, show how RTX integrates seamlessly with Microsoft Visual Studio, and introduce helpful tools. RTX requires very little to get started. All you need is 32-bit Windows XP or later, and Microsoft Visual Studio 2005 or later. RTX consists of several different components. In this segment, we will show you where you can find the tools and utilities. By default, RTX installs icons to the desktop and start menu. On the desktop, you'll see icons for RTX properties, which we'll review in a moment, RTSS Run, which you can use to run RTSS applications and RTDLLs, and one for the RTX demo, a helpful utility we'll look at in part three of this video. You can also find these along with other RTX tools and utilities in the RTX submenu under Start All Programs Interval Zero. After you installed RTX, you were required to activate and configure the product. You can use the Activate RTX option to launch the Activation and Configuration Utility, which shows you the components that are currently licensed and allows you to change the current RTX boot configuration. In the Tools menu, you will find several tools and utilities that can be used to control RTSS processes, measure performance for application, and modify the behavior of RTSS applications. We'll talk about them later. You'll also notice that RTX documentation submenu. Here you can find a series of helpful mini tutorials, release notes, and the full product documentation, available as compiled HTML help. Note that the most up-to-date product documentation is available online at www.intervalzero.com. Perhaps the RTX component you will use most is the RTX Properties Control Panel. This is a tab dialog that provides a number of settings that allow you to configure your RTX environment and determine how the RTX subsystem and RTSS applications behave. In the System tab, you can specify whether the RTX subsystem starts automatically on system startup or manually by the user or dependent process. You can also change internal behavior settings and set the number of RTSS processes allowed to run within the real-time RTX subsystem. You can also set the HAL timer period, which is an internal timer that RTX applications use for synchronization. The default value for the HAL timer period is 100 microseconds, but you can set it as low as 1 microsecond. In the Debug tab, you can specify debugging support for Microsoft WinDebug or Visual Studio, or turn off debugging altogether. Here we have it set for user-level debugging, which allows us to debug our application with Visual Studio. You can configure RTX's default memory allocation behavior in the Memory tab. Here you can opt to use local memory or to request memory from Windows. In the Starvation tab, you can configure how RTX treats Windows starvation notifications. Optionally, you can notify the RTX subsystem if Windows has not been allowed to run for a period of time that you specify. RTX provides exception control for its RTSS processes. In the Exceptions tab, you can configure RTX to either terminate or freeze faulting RTSS processes and define how RTX handles a number of exception types. RTX has its own version of the Windows Device Manager which you can access from the Hardware tab. You can use this to configure plug-and-play devices for use with RTX. You will also notice a TCP IP tab. RTX Runtime ships with its own TCP IP stack called RT TCP IP. This protocol stack accesses the physical transport layer via an Ethernet driver running under the real-time subsystem. You can configure support for the stack and specify the appropriate INI configuration file in this tab. In the Control tab, you can modify the boot configuration you set during product configuration and determine whether to use shared or dedicated mode. Shared mode is supported on systems with eight or fewer processors with one shared between Windows and RTX. Dedicated mode is supported on systems that have up to 32 processors. There are addition options of RTX that allow up to 31 processors to be licensed to the RTSS subsystem. Also in this tab, you can check the status of the real-time RTX subsystem and drivers and start or stop the subsystem. Note that you may see additional tabs in the RTX Properties control panel depending on the components that you have licensed. 
See the RTX documentation for information on all of the RTX properties tabs and settings. You can use the RTX software developer kit to develop real-time applications. RTX SDK includes header files, libraries, and Microsoft WinDebug and Visual Studio support, which integrates seamlessly with the Microsoft Visual Studio IDE to provide a powerful and familiar development environment. RTX adds a debug add-in to Microsoft Visual Studio, and when you launch Visual Studio after RTX has been installed, you'll notice a few additions. The most visible of these is the RTX toolbar, which contains features that allow you to configure the debug add-in, view the complete product documentation, and view about information about your RTX product. RTX also integrates with the new project menu in Visual Studio by adding templates for creating an RTX application, device driver, or network driver. You can access these templates from the Visual C++ branch under Installed Templates in the New Project window. The templates utilize a helpful RTX wizard to get you started. Just select the template you want to use, provide a name, and click OK. You can use the RTX application wizard to generate an RTSS application, which is the equivalent of a Windows EXE file that runs in the RTX subsystem, or an RTDLL project which is the RTX version of dynamic libraries supported within the RTX environment. You can accept the current template settings or modify basic settings throughout the wizard. For instance, you can specify a new application type or string convention, or whether to add RTX provided support for Microsoft's C runtime libraries. The wizard can also provide you with source code and header files to start with, which you can then modify and expand upon. For example, we'll start with source code for a periodic timer thread. Here you can see that the wizard has generated some code for us to start with. RTX adds two new configuration types to the default set in Microsoft Visual Studio, RTSS Debug and RTSS Release. You can use these to build a debug or release RTSS application. Using configurations, you can build a Windows and RTX version of an application without having to make any code changes. You build an RTSS application the same way you would build a Windows app. Here we'll select Build Solution from the Build menu. We can also debug our application. To do this, we'll add a breakpoint to our code and select Start Debugging from the Debug menu. RTX also installs several sample projects to help you get familiar with building RTSS applications. These are available from the Samples folder in the RTX installation directory. Once you've generated an RTSS application in Visual Studio, you can use the RTX tools available from the RTX tools submenu shown at the start of this video to control RTSS processes, measure performance for applications, and modify the behavior of RTSS applications. For this segment, I've copied shortcuts for the RTX tools to the desktop. The first tool we'll look at is the RTSS Task Manager, which is the RTX version of the Windows Task Manager. It shows all running RTSS processes and active RTDLLs on your system and allows you to start RTSS tasks directly from the dialog. When you start a task through Task Manager, the RTSS Run utility is launched, through which you can run an RTSS process or load an RTDLL. When you run an RTSS process, the RTX server appears. RTX Server displays and logs print messages from all RTX applications and RTDLLs. Here we can see the message for a sample application that we created. Unlike Windows Console applications, all RTSS applications will output console data to the same window. Now that we have a process running, we can see that RTSS Task Manager displays the processor affinity masks and process ID for each task. Note that it will only display this information for multiprocessor machines. Next we'll look at RTSS Object Viewer, which allows you to view all active processes, threads, global objects, and associated handles in the RTSS environment. Select an object in the tree to view its information in the list view. 
You can view information in a compact or column view, and even select the columns you want to include in the list view. RTSS Object Viewer also allows you to view information on RTSS subsystem memory usage. The RTX Time View utility is a real-time event tracing tool that allows you to capture and display the execution sequence of threads within RTX. The Data Collection Setup Wizard allows you to set up the parameters of your Timing Trace test run. You select the types of events within your program that you want to collect, and also what condition will be used to trigger the start of data logging. You can create user-specific events using an API function within RTX called RTTraceEvent, which lets time view flag when specific code paths are being executed. Once a time view log is created, the time view viewer allows you to view the collected data as a text log of the events. Using RTX Demo, you can view and compare response time latencies in the Win32 and RTSS environments, or the time between a hardware interrupt and a software thread. The results are plotted to a graphical area where minimum, average, and maximum latency values are displayed. Finally, you can launch Performance View to measure RTSS application load. The information you see depends on whether you have a dedicated or shared RTX system. Here we can see the CPU utilization for our application on a dedicated system. If we start a load that uses CPU, we notice an increase in CPU memory. That ends our introduction of Interval Zero RTX. For more information on RTX, see the RTX documentation and support resources available online at www.intervalzero.com. Thanks for watching.